The Lorax by Dr. Zeus. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing except old crows, is a street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could. The foursome body lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old one sister lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the once that don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurking on top of his store. He lurks in his lurking cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffed moof. And on special dank midnights in August he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. At the end of a rope, he lets down to pail, and you have to toss in a fifteen cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his grovelous glove. Then he grunts. I will call you my whisper phone for the secrets I tell you or for your ears alone. Slap. Down slaps the whisper phone into your ear and the old ones who are whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snuggly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. <laughs> now I'll tell you, says his teeth sounding grey, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the ponds were still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swirling swans ran out in space one morning I came to this glorious place and first I saw the trees the truffula trees the bright coloured chuffs on the chuffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And out of the trees, that's the brown barber lutes, frisking about in their barber suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of humming fish humming or splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees. All my life I'd be searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts were much softer than silk and they had a sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping and joy in my heart. 
I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. I had no time at all. I built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skills and of great speedy speed, I took the soft tuff and knitted a th need. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brown and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with so dusty sneeze. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. <gasps> He was very upset and he shouted and puffed. What's that pain you've made out of my truffula tuff? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need is find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, it has far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorak said, So, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fuel for need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the Thneed had his knitting was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. Poor stupid guy! You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone and I put it a quick call. I called my brothers, my uncle and aunt. I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wansla family to get mighty rich. It's over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weak Haven. Shop right up South Stitch. And then no time at all in a factory I built. The whole Wansla family was working full tilt. We were all knitting the needs, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hack, which whacked up four truffula trees out one smacker. We were making the needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax? He didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. 
I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees. Would you seem like to be chopping as fast as you please? But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who play in the shade in their barbaloot suits and they're happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking to my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go round, and my poor barber loots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys. He cried and he sent them away. I, the once love, felt sad as I watched them all go. But... Mm, business is business and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I mean no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the needs I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on, on biggering, selling more for needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snuggled, he sniffed. <coughs> Once there, he cried with a crudulous croak. Once there, you're making such smuggler smoke. <coughs> My poor swan swan, <coughs> they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smoke in his throat. <coughs> And so, said the Lorax, please, pardon my cough, they cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They might have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smoke you've smogged up around here. What's more? snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machine rotates on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup and also Shloppity Shlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wurzler man, you. You glumping the pond when the humming fish hummed. No more they hum, for their gills are all gummed. I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and woeful weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got terribly mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I am telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on bigger and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more shuffier trees into canoes, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. <laughs> and 
At that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside the fields came a sickening smack. Of an axe of a tree, then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in snow time, my uncles and aunts, everyone. All waved to me goodbye. They jumped into their cars and drove away under the smoke smuggled stars. Now all that was left near the bed smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance. And he's lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hissed himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the word unless. Whatever that means, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, said the Winsler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems pretty clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the once love. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's a last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And the truffula seeds are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back.